All right, for this last video, um, we're using something called sigma notation, which you guys use with the arithmetic series, right? Um, it's actually quite a bit easier with geometric series because um, you don't have to use any factorials or anything like that. So when we, when we do this, we call this sigma notation, right? Because that is, um, that is sigma, right? Um, so what we're going to do is basically we know how to do it like this, right? We're using our, what they gave us to use. And so what I need to figure out is I need to figure out, hey, what's going to be my A1, right? My first term. And what's going to be my R? And what's my N? Right? i got to figure all three of these things out. And once I can figure those out from this, I can work it in here. So the way this works, right, is this is saying you're going to repeat this, right? And you're going to add it all together. So you're going to put 3 in, figure this out. You're going to put 4 in, right? So the first thing to figure out, I think, is N. Right, is how many times are we doing this? So if you're going from 3 to 10, right, it's really easy to say, oh, it must be 7 times, right? And just call it that because you're going from 3 to 10. But hang on a second because you're including both 3 and 10. So that means you're doing 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th time, right? And if you add up how many there are, guys, there is 8. There's eight of them. So it's not seven times. It's eight. So your n is always one more than what that is subtracted. And that's kind of a weird thing, but it's like you're including it, right? You're including where you're starting from because you're actually adding that in. So it's like the opposite of when you're counting over on a graph where you don't count where you start. This one you do. All right? Now, your first term you find simply by plugging this in to the formula. So I'm going to go four times 2 to the 3 minus 1, because that is the first one. We're going from 3 to 10. So this gives me 4 times 2 squared, which is 4 times 4, which is 16. All right, so my A1 is 16. All right, and now my R, your R is just the thing that's having the exponent raised on it. So your R in this case is 2. All right, and so when I write this out now, it's going to be S of N, is equal to 16 minus 16 times 2 to the eighth power, all right, all over 1 minus 2. Okay, so it's 16 minus 16 times, well, to the eighth power, I want to say is 256, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's figure that out. To the eighth is two, or 256, yeah. So 256 all over negative 1, okay? And so that's going to be 16 minus, so times 16, 256. What's going on with my calculator here? It's like not being very cooperative. 4,096, all right? all over negative 1. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to make it negative. I'm going to add it to 16. It's going to give me negative 4,080, and I'm going to divide by negative 1, which basically means you're just changing the sign. So it's 4,080. All right? So uh, that is, uh, that's, that's how you do that, right? You just, you got to find these from there, and then you do what we've already kind of learned how to do. So let's try, try, try a couple more. All right. So here we go. Um, first things first, n. All right. So 12 minus 4 is 8. I'm going to add one more. So that's 9. All right. My first term is going to be, I'm going to put 4 in here. So you're going to have 1 fourth times 3 to the, what's 4 minus 1? It's 3. Right. So my first term is going to be this awful 27 fourths, all right? It's kind of like, ugh, right? Yuck, why? All right, and then your R is just the number that's getting raised to the exponent, so it's 3. So for my series, right, for my sum of my series, I'm going to go S of N is equal to 27 fourths times, or minus 27 fourths times R, which is 3, times 3 to the ninth power, all over 
1 minus 3. All right, so we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little simplifying here. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor 27 fourths out of both of these. So we get 1 minus 3 to the ninth, okay? And then 1 minus 3 is negative 2. The next thing I'm going to do, and if you don't understand what I'm doing, um, just hang in there, is I know that when I have a fraction that's on top of a fraction that you can actually take your denominator and move it in with the other denominator, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as 27 times 1 minus, and then let's figure out what 3 to the ninth power is now, right? I think it's going to be pretty giant. Yeah, 19,683. 19,683 over 4 times negative 2. All right, so we're going to have 27, we're going to have negative 8, and then negative... 19,682, right? Okay, so let's figure out what this is. So this one, all right, times 27 divided by negative 8 gives us 66,426.75. And hopefully you realize that if you had 27 fourths as your first term, right, you know, if you get to your second term, right, so to get to A2, you know, you would multiply it by 9, right, and that would give you um, something over 4 as well, right? So you're going to repeatedly have something fourths, right? So you're going to, very likely, you're gonna, it's not going to work out, right, where you're going to have, or not, not that it doesn't work out, but that is not going to be an integer. Okay, so that's how you do this one, all right? A little, little ugly in the number department, but not, not awful, right? You guys, you guys are, are capable of doing this. Um, the fraction thing that I did um, is, uh, is just basically coming from an understanding of how numbers work, right? And um, if that looked really confusing to you from this step, then you could have easily done this. You could have thought of it as 27 fourths over 1 minus 3 to the ninth, and then thought of it as times 1. Just split it like that, right? And then if you do that, you just kind of deal with this and then multiply it by that. And then that works as well, too. But um, for me, I like finding quicker and slightly more easy ways to get things simple soon, right? All right, now... For this one, let's find my n. So I'm going to go 9 minus 2 is 7, and then we're going to add 1, and we're going to get 8. So n is 8. We're going to put in, to find my a1, we're going to put 2 in. So we're going to have 2 thirds times 4 to the 2 minus 1, which is just 4 to the 1. So we have 2 thirds times 4, which is 8 thirds. And I'm going to leave it as 8 thirds. Okay? And then your r is 4. And so for this one, we're going to have some ugly fraction stuff going on as well, right? So we're going to go, we got 8 thirds minus 8 thirds times my A1 is, um, well, that was my A1. My R is 4 times 4 to the 8th power, all right? All over 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So let's, um, let's factor out our 8 thirds. We're going to do 1 minus 4 to the 8th over negative 3. And now we're going to, I'm going to bust this up. Um, I'm going to do this one a little differently. So I'm going to make this 8 thirds times 1 minus 4 to the eighth. And then we're going to make that times. And so I'm changing this 1 over like that, right? So makes it a, makes it a little simpler, all right? So if I have three things multiplying, this is basically over 1, right? It's going to put it over negative 9. And now I just have 8 times 1 minus 4 to the 8th. And then it's just a matter of just putting your numbers in a calculator and figuring that out. Well, 4 to the 8th, all right, is 65,536. I make that negative, add it to 1. And now I'm going to multiply it by 8. It gives me negative 524,280. 
all over negative 9, all right? And then you get this number with a repeating decimal. You get, so you get 58, 253, sorry, 253, and then with a 0.3 repeating. Well, 0.3 repeating, guys, is just one third, right? So it's, here, let me write that so I can, you can actually read it. So it is going to be, that's like some of the worst writing I think I could do. Um, it's 58,253 and a third, all right, is what you get. And hopefully, again, like the last one, you should realize you're going to have thirds on all your terms, right? So it's, it's very likely that it's not going to work out and wind up as an integer, okay? So um, I hope these have been helpful to you guys. Um, good luck with everything, and always feel free to see me or whoever your teacher is if you have any questions. So we'll talk to you later.